If you want your large language model to process a huge data, for example an excel file with millions of row, then you have to use code interpreter. If you are not familiar with code interpreter, let me show you what it is. If you open ChatGPT, here you have an option to upload a file. Here you can upload a file and start asking questions about your file. For example, let's ask this question. What are the columns are there in this dataset? So what is happening here is the model is writing a Python script and it is executing the Python script in a sandbox environment, which is nothing but the code interpreter and the output from the code interpreter will be given back to the model to come up with the final response. But why do we need to use this method? Because models like GPT-40 or 40 mini could not handle such a huge data due to its context limit. Basically each and every model has certain context limit. To avoid this context limit issue, we are using code interpreter. But wait, it is not free. You have to pay for it. But the good thing is, we can build our own code interpreter to handle Python script. Let me show you how my own code interpreter works. I have created a simple data analyst copilot where you can upload your excel file and start doing your analysis. I have created a separate video on this. You can click on this link to watch that video. Let's upload an excel file and ask the same question here. As you can see here, this code interpreter also works similar to what we have seen in ChatGPT. But how I have created this? Simple. I created this using Jupyter Notebook REST API. Basically, Jupyter provides an option to programmatically create, edit and delete notebooks. By using that REST API, I have created this code interpreter. So I have created a complete model that takes care of everything for you. Let me give you a quick walkthrough of this module. Here I have my notebook manager class which takes a session id. Basically I want to create one notebook for each and every session but for your use case you can change it. For example you can create one notebook for each and every user that is completely based on your use case. So this class takes a session id and it creates a new notebook if it is not available. Now let's look into this create notebook method and see what it does. So. After running your Jupyter Notebook server in your local machine, if you make a POST request to this particular endpoint, a new notebook, a new untitled notebook will be created. Similarly, there are different endpoints for different purpose. Simply I have used them to create, edit and delete the notebooks. Now here we have an another method, add code to cell. What it does is, it takes a notebook name and your python script. It simply creates a new cell with your python script. And here we have one more method which is execute code. What it does is it takes your notebook name and it executes the final cell which is added recently and it returns the output. And finally we have run code method which takes care of everything. It takes your code and it creates a new notebook if it is not available. If it is available, it will simply create a new cell with your python script and it will execute that particular cell and it will return the output. So basically this is the method which you should use. And one more important thing, the output will contain the display type. So what kind of output it is, whether it is a pandas data frame or text or image or even it could be a plotly object, so whatever it is. So it will tell you what kind of output it is so that you will be able to show in the UI without any issue. So that's all about the module. Uh, I highly encourage you guys to go through the module and if you guys are facing any issue let me know in the comment section. Uh, I'll look into it. So now let me show you how you can run this module. Here I have my docker file which runs the Jupyter notebook in a separate docker environment. So it is always good to run this code interpreter in a separate docker environment so that it will never affect our local environment. So first we need to build a docker image. So let's build a docker image. Uh, to build a docker image you can use this command uh, docker build iphone t and whatever the name you want to give and a dot. Okay, so after that you can use this command 
to run the container that's it now our code interpreters are ready now let's open a notebook here i have imported my notebook manager class and here i have initialized it with a session id okay in this case it is just notebook one let's run this yes here i have a simple uh, print statement okay so let's remove the second print statement and let's run this as you can see here we have got the output so this is how you can use this code interpreter so follow me guys for more useful content like this and that's it that's all i wanted to share with you all